an important land acknowledgement. And this evening, I get the opportunity to do that. So uh, I will begin by just acknowledging that Halton, as we know it today, is rich in the history and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis, from the lands of the Anishinaabe to the Ottawandaran and the Haudenosaunee and the Métis. These lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in Indigenous history. As we gather on these treaty lands, we are in solidarity with our Indigenous brothers and sisters, uh, hopefully many of whom are joining us this evening, and respect for the four directions, lands, waters, plants, animals, and the ancestors that walked before us, and the wonderful elements that creation and of creation that exist. We certainly acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for being stewards of this traditional land. Um, before I let someone else speak, I just I've had the opportunity over the last few weeks to uh, engage with some of our partners and friends from Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. And it's really been an enlightening experience. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to bring up uh, for, for today's land acknowledgement, I was kind of torn because I, I'm finally finding myself um, full of so much information that I want to share. And even though I've been doing that in my personal life, I realize I have a very small period of time today. Um, so what I was really hoping to share um, is some resources that I hope will be beneficial for everyone. So when doing a land acknowledgement like this, uh, it's important to make sure that it's purposeful and with intention. And um, so to do that, I, I wanna make sure that I'm giving some intent for you guys moving forward and, and some information that I think may service you in the work that you're doing with indigenous communities. First of which, um, I just wanna point out that if, if you're nervous about doing an indigenous land acknowledgement, I wanna point to uh, some great resources, the Our Kids Network, um, so you just visit ourkidsnetwork.ca. This is an aid organization uh, partnership right here in Halton. You can click on Working Together, their Indigenous Reconciliation, and our Exploring Resources. I'll drop the link in the chat. And there's actually so many great resources. So even here, there's territorial acknowledgments, and there's just tips and instructions on how to do this type of information effectively. If you really want to get down and start searching, you can check out Grandmother's Voice. That's who we're meeting with today, Jody and Sherry. Um, one thing that really stuck out to me, uh, and this this one is always hard, and I've, I've 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 introduced this two or three times when I've done a land acknowledgement, is uh, and I, I come back to this often. Is so if you look at um, the murdered and missing Indigenous women and in, uh, two spirited, um, the link here. Uh, if you click on Take in the series. This is really powerful infographic that I um, I kind of you're muted, Daniel. How long has that been going on? Like Just a second. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this the link that I have before you. You can actually toggle to see. So as you might be able to assume assume by looking at me, I am a Caucasian man. Uh, my wife, Caucasian woman, recently gave birth to a beautiful uh, little Caucasian woman. Um, and when I need motivation, as I rarely do to do, do community activity, this is one place I can look. This is an unacceptable statistic um, that Indigenous women are 16 times more likely to be murdered or missing than Caucasian women in Canada, that being my child. If I could do anything that would reduce the chances of anything of harm happening to my child, I would do it, anything, anything at all. Um, so when we do these types of community building exercises and activities, and you try to find the purpose of why you're giving your time to something like this program, I just remember that it's so important. And there's a lot at stake. There's a lot at stake in terms of why building sense of, sense of belonging, understanding, and trust are valuable. Um, I will uh, place the links for some of the, the resources I shared tonight, but I just thought this was an important um, graphic to share, because uh, I'm sure many of you, all of you have important, we're all here because we were born through uh, a wonderful woman that gave us life and anything we could do to protect them and improve their quality of life is, is valuable. And it's, uh, it's very scary that um, women in this country are facing such disproportionately poor outcomes. Uh, but I will turn things over to my partner, Tanya. Hello everyone and welcome. Um, before we start tonight, we have some participation instructions. So if this is your first time with us, uh, we have quite a few people joining us this evening. So we find it best to use the chat box to communicate. Uh, you can also look for the hand up feature um, in the chat box to ask any questions. You can also privately message the host, Daniel, um, to submit questions or inquiries without interrupting um, our guests or our presenters. Um, 
And please keep yourself on mute. It helps all of us with any feedback or disruption that might be coming through. Um, and please respect one another and everyone's perspectives. And also you will notice that this program is being recorded. So you will see a red dot in your upper corner there. So enjoy the evening and I will now pass it on to my colleague, Nabil. Awesome, thank you so much for that, uh, Tanya. And again, just in continuing with the, the good intentions, um, just some agreements that we collectively agreed to is to stay engaged. Um, this means to be uh, morally, emotionally, intellectually, and socially involved in the conversation that's being had, to be intentionally present, um, to experience discomfort. Um, this norm acknowledges that discomfort is inevitable. Um, learning causes a level of anxiety, um, but this is a safe space to experience that discomfort and to, to challenge some of, those, some of those notions and to, to speak our truth. Um, to be open about our thoughts and feelings and not just say what you think others want to hear um, and expect and accept non-closure, right? To, to be okay with uncertainty is certainly one of the best ways in which we can learn and the best ways in which we can get excited about the uncertainty of what it is that we're going to learn today. Um, and so with that being said, I'm very excited uh, to see what we're going to learn today. So on to Sherry and Jody uh, and take it away. Let me get those guys spotlighted here. Okay, there you are, Jody, Sherry, the floor is yours. If anyone has any questions throughout, um, please don't hesitate to throw that in the chat. I know that there's a lot to learn and, and that's what we're all here for. Mm -hmm. mm, Scano, yes, good evening. Uh -huh. Hello everyone. This is uh, another beautiful day. I hope I hope all of you have had a time to visit and be out on the land and and be with Mother Earth and all of her beautiful energies. Daniel, thank you so much for uh, your beautiful land acknowledgement. They get better and better. Uh, Tanya, yours last week touched my heart. I actually had a little tear in my eye. And, you know, it's really important. I had a conversation with Grandmother Renee um, just yesterday, actually just today, about land acknowledgements. And, you know, we were, there's just so much learning. And, you know, I think I may have mentioned this on here, but um, I think we need to mention it again that, you know, um, it is a, it's a time, you know, the land acknowledgements are for people to become more conscious of where they are. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what the elders thought of, you know, 10, 12 years ago when they said, let's start with land acknowledgements. You know, and for so long, people sat there and said, well, why do we have to do a land acknowledgement? And let's get an Indigenous person to get a land acknowledgement. And, you know, so so it's really wonderful when we hear, um, you know, our relatives, right, mm -hmm. share that okay. it's it's so important um, okay. to us as well. But I think just to yourself, because we are really in a time of, of consciousness and waking up to, to really being thankful. And so um, I just like to just again, talk about the Thanksgiving address, uh, the opening address and how that these words are of, you know, Thanksgiving that were brought to us by the Haudenosaunee people, which are uh, Mohawk, Oneida, Tuscarora, Cayuga, Onondaga, Seneca, Mohawk, I think I got them all. Um, and so these are the words that they used before all else. So it's, a, you know, as we do acknowledging the people, Mother Earth, you know, the waters, uh, the, land, the fish, the, uh, the plants and the plants today. Again, I came to you rushing over from the land at Country Heritage Park that we have become partners with. And this is, you know, we haven't done, uh, we haven't done anything uh, um, in sharing it on a, a platform yet with the community, but we have sent out uh, letters to our partners that we've, you know, we've been in relationship with or Sherry has sat at tables with everyone that we believe in this place that, sh you know, that should know that we're doing this or that we have this opportunity pretty much knows right now. Um, and we've engaged our community, our immediate Indigenous community. And it's just really wonderful to know that it's like, I feel like once the land was offered for us to build this, this is a, our uh, missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls living monument. And this, we did ceremony for this idea 
uh, last fall for our missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls um, at Crawford Lake. And we actually began that at the museum with uh, Tanya was a part of that and some of our other partners. And this is what happened. It came into fruition. We were offered this um, land to build this living monument for our um, for us to acknowledge uh, what we'll talk about a little bit later, which are the calls for justice for the missing. So Jody, I just I just want to so people are aware. So this land is actually being currently developed now in Milton, which was given in kind to Grandmother's Voice to develop this monument, like the, a living mon a monument for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Yes. And where yeah. is this located if people wanted to know in proximity? Uh, Tremaine and almost like the 401 in Milton. Well, what a, what a, you can go. So there's questions here of like, so how can you, they contribute to the living monument and, and maybe you could let us know uh, mm -hmm. what other plans are for this space. Uh -huh. For sure, I, I, we can do that now if you want. I can just tell you, just briefly because I don't really want to take away from what you know what we're here to do. But we wanted to give you little morsels. I said you know to Sherry and and a few of the other people that that were there. Like we have to share this. This is so important uh -huh. to know that when we left, this was happening right here, and uh -huh. some of our partners came to build this with us. So actually, so we we were contacted by Country Heritage Park in February, and they said we have a space. We are thinking because of the pandemic, we were, we need uh, a healing center and a, a healing garden, a wellness center. Can you help us? And we're, we said for sure. So there's a, a big party, a, a big party. Yeah, there'll be a big party. There'll be a big there's party. A, <laughs> there's a big part of this. It's just amazing how the minute he, we were offered this land, indigenous community members showed up. And so today we want we want to we want to share an, another experience with you. But just to let you know, I, I think I saw something pop up: donations, all of that. You know, there you can go to Grandmother's Voice. This is this really started as a grassroots. So if you are going to our website or you're going somewhere to expect something big and wonderful, it's really not there yet. We're doing the best that we can grassroots on our hours of of passion for what we're doing for our community. So yes, you can definitely. I'm sure there's a there that you can offer, um, you know, helping, uh, mm -hmm. donations of any kind, but we'll be doing more of a campaign in a little bit. But before I move on, we just were notified that we have um, our living monument, uh, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Two-Spirited, um, I guess, campaign that we created because our idea was to take these living monuments across Canada as one of our calls for justice. And we were just um, acknowledged as a top 10 in the David Suzuki uh, foundation, uh, like a, a, a grant that we had future. applied for. It's mm -hmm. a yeah, future gr uh, ground prize. And so they're going to launch that actually tomorrow. And then, and then there's a whole process with that. So we're just, there's a lot happening and we just felt really, and we're just in a place of gratitude and we just want to share as much with everybody because what Halton is doing here is very different. And we know this because we've, we've been um, supported by organizations like ours from other communities in Ontario that are saying, you're creating something that has never been done before. And so we wanna support this work because it's like a template of what we can do, a community of practice. And so so I really, you know, I think that, I hope that I've brought everyone's heart and minds together. I, I, you know, we when we see a land like that, I really feel like it does bring us outside and understand and acknowledge that the sun, the moon, everything that is in this, you know, our, our uh, Thanksgiving address, we all feel that energy right now. And so mm -hmm. I'd like to just kind of pass it over to Sherry and, um, and move on with our, our event today. Mm -hmm. Yes, good evening everyone and welcome back. Um, we're at week four and uh, we've covered an awful lot of ground already and uh, we have, uh, after this, we have three more weeks to go with each other. And so as you can see, we um, have, uh, yeah, three more weeks after this. Um, but anyhow, uh, we have so much to, so much to know, so much to learn and we're trying to give you little snippets of things that we know every single week. And so last week, of course, we had our guest speaker, Dr. Michael Dockstader, who, who joined us and has been a wonderful, wonderful mentor to us. 
and a lot of comments came back and he had a lot to say about 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 certain things and so that's how come we get so involved with an awful lot of things that we're doing because we have really good conversations and we've tried to touch base on a little you know just a little tiny bit little snippets of something that you can just kind of learn a little bit more and then take the action to google it and to learn and to learn a little bit more as well but you know we're really here to talk a little bit more about creating community and it's the first time in a long time that Indigenous folk are at the center of creating community. And it is wonderful. We have this opportunity, like Jody said, um, and, and it's coming to fruition. It is wonderful to be in, this, in these spaces and places because it, not very long ago in my lifetime, it, wasn't, it hadn't been the same for my mom, for, for even for me, and I'm only 60. Um, and so even for me, it hasn't been the same. But it certainly has changed in the last 20 years of, uh, of, of really gaining momentum and really understanding an awful lot of the policies that were, were in place in Canada that prevented Indigenous people from doing the work and to also prevent us from participating. Uh, there's an awful lot of stereotypes and racism. We kind of talked a little tiny bit about that, but I know that there's a, a separate class that we could totally do on, on its own. But on the meantime, you know, we really here to really celebrate what we're actually doing in Halton. And like Jody said, Halton is an anomaly. Uh, for a long, long time, we never had any any sort of uh, center for Indigenous folk to come to. And now with reconciliation and land back and things like this that are happening in our community, and not that um, the CEO knew anything about that at, at Country Heritage Park, he just knew that it was the right thing to do. He knew that he had space in place, but the people that were missing were the Indigenous people that were missing. And so that's where, you know, we were, we were tapped on the shoulder to say, hey, our, you know, we would like, we'd love for you guys to come and take space. The other thing that we want to talk about a little bit more is uh, how important community is. Because we had a little conversation with Michael Dockstader last, last week, Uncle, Dr. Mike, and we call him Uncle Mike because he's, he's told us we can call him Uncle Mike. And when we come into community, you know, we are aunties, we're uncles, we're grandmas and grandpas. And, uh, and aunts and uncles and sisters and brothers. And so with Uncle Mike, knowing what he knows and has been such a wonderful supporter and so knowledgeable, and we call him our indigenous intellect, has been also instrumental in helping our, you know, helping Andrea and uh, who's gonna be talking as well. And I think Jody's gonna introduce her a little bit, but just to show that how much work um, it is to build community, but how important it is to keep the community engaged. And just like you are with us today and are your, we're in your community and we're building community together is we really do want to keep you engaged and we want to keep you um, enlightened and, and hopeful and, uh, and also to be practical about certain learnings that we're doing as well. And so I, I've, um, I'm tossing my, I'm holding my eagle feather up here. And, uh, you know, and we've both been gifted an eagle feather by our elders. And this is also our, for me, it's my grounding, but it's also my truth telling, right? Because once you hold an eagle feather, you're bound to be telling the truth. And you're bound to hold that truth in your heart. And we always hold it. I do anyhow, like I know I have it in my right hand, but most of the time I have it in my left because that's also part the, the appendage that's closest to my heart. And so when I hold this, it, it actually does ground me. It doesn't make me feel nervous. I can you know, talk about what we're talking about, but it's also very important that we understand how the importance of this eagle feather. And, uh, and a lot of these teachings were also taken away from us as well. And uh, we have a wonderful partnership with Conservation Halton who, who, um, and Mountsburg, who actually gives us these eagle feathers. And, uh, and then once we gifted them, then we have ceremony and then we give them, we give them away to, to other deserving individuals. But uh, the eagle feather is so, so important to indigenous people because not only do we use an eagle feather for a smudge, but we also know that when the smoke is rising after we've cleansed ourselves, the eagle takes our prayers up to creator. And so Jody just finished doing a little bit of the Thanksgiving address and talking about the land and the, the ground and mother earth. And when we give gratitude and we, we smudge and we are thankful through that whole cleansing ceremony that we've done. And if we were in person, we would be doing a smudging ceremony with you every single time that we open. Maybe not every single time, but quite often so that you would know. 
And, uh, and these are also things that were taken away from us. So this eagle feather is our truth, truth teller, and it's also taking our prayers to creator. And, uh, and I know that I'm looking at the time here, and I know that we want to introduce uh, our next guest. So Jody, do you, I know, Jody, do you want to take, take it over? <laughs> uh, yes, thank you, Sherry. I love it. And, and we were gifted these, and what that means is, is actually we were gifted these um, when we started to really do the work in Halton, when we really started to take time out of our own personal time out of our away from our families and really dig deep into what we needed to do in our community. And so, um, and what that means is, you know, when we're having these conversations with partners, whether it be the town or, you know, the library, you know, when we talk with them, we we're interested in knowing who's in their community because right now it's just emails, who shows up, what, you know, the, the who's on the school board and, and really, if you have those the, the content of those people in your community, you can't just give away emails. We know this about personal privacy. And, and so it was up to us every time we were in, in engaging with our partners, we'd say, hey, do you know of any Indigenous people that work for you? And even when we sit to do any, um, any of our services that we provide to organizations and corporations that we deal with, it was the first thing that we asked, even when we started to deal with the police, how many Indigenous staff do you have? And they were like, I'm not really sure. Like, how do you ask? What do you do? Right. And so it just so happened that the one, one time we were at the library and it was, we had had that conversation before or wherever, and it was, do you, you know, do you know who is, and this is how you really start your community so that you create spaces. So it's safe enough for them to say, oh, I see a painting on the wall. Somebody here is thinking indigenous, where can I go? And so that's what, like, what we've been trying to do is create those safe spaces. And so one of our conversations uh, with a community member, and it was, I have to introduce you to someone. And we received this email and it was a beautiful story. And it, and it really made me feel comfortable myself because it was like I was reading my story. Somebody who had the same journey of me as not knowing, just not knowing, but knowing, feeling. And so I'd like love to introduce Andrea Jones, who just happened to show up at the like the best time, uh, sent sent to us for the the right reasons. She's been a big part of what we're doing at the um, at the property. I think it was like we met, we emailed back and forth, and we met. And you know, th there's lots of projects happening, but she did also come in and help us with our space at the land, like three days after we met her. And she's like organizing and doing, and we've created amazing things together already. And Andrea's so delightful, and we're just honored that you're our sister, and do we're hanging out together now. Thank you, Jody. This is so exciting. I'm so happy to be here and part of this with you guys and everyone here um, as a participator, but also part of my own healing journey. Um, and the coincidence with the town of Oakville is really just that, how we met. And I'll talk about that. Today I was working downtown Oakville and I was on the construction site and I was sitting poolside actually, out not in the pool, but they're getting it ready. And I'm in the office and I could smell the lilacs, but there was a lot of noise. And I was like, oh, I just would love some peace and quiet right now to get out my laptop. Um, and I think that Country Heritage Firm is gonna be that, and it's so close. I can't wait to go there um, and have that. So thanks for sharing those photos that's happening right now. And what's happening at Iroquois Ridge is happening right now um, as we speak. Um, the benches went down yesterday. The planters are there. The garden's getting ready. The plants were delivered today from Minicon to the Oakville Greenhouse. So they'll be coming on Tuesday. So there's so much to be grateful for that I, I never want to take that for granted. Um, hello, Ani, Bujou, Andrea, and Anishinaabe, Donjaba, Michisaki, First Nation, Anishinaabe, Kwe, Indau, Nigagwe, Anishinaabe, Mowi. Hello, my name is Andrea, and my maternal ancestors are from Mississauga, First Nation. I am Anishinaabe. I am learning the Anishinaabe language. 
I didn't know my ethnicity growing up um, because my mom was a 60s scoop survivor and she was adopted into a, a white family um, who was Christian and uh, we had a very happy life. Um, I'm also learning to practice smudging. And with this, I say my intention is to offer you a perspective from the context of someone who straddles both worlds. Um, growing up, not knowing I was Indigenous, I'm able to see both lenses. My father's side is non-Indigenous. So I'm starting to see what happened here and forgive, and there's so much to be thankful for. Um, so hopefully we can help bridge the gaps and, um, so I want, I know you want to hear about the sign, which is up. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I just wanted to give you a bit of context why I wanted to do the sign and why I got Jody involved. Um, really how we met was such a coincidence. And I was working on a town project at Central Library, a uh, renovation there in December. They were closed. And so I talked to what staff there was. There was only one or two people there. And he said, well, there's some indigenous artists coming. And they painted the food share alcove at Central uh, Main Entrance. And I, I was so excited to meet them. And I was nervous, like I am tonight. So please <laughs> give me the benefit of the doubt, too. But so uh, I went and talked to them. And they're also from. Uh, this is Saga First Nation. So it was like, wow, here they are right here and I'm right here. And this blew my mind because my mom was adopted and I only knew I was indigenous. I was 40 years old. It was the year before I came to work for the town of Oakville. And I joined the team here as a project lead for accessibility in the facilities and construction department. Um, so after 15 years doing construction and uh, residential, now I'm actually in a meaningful role. I actually can help make a difference and go fix things um, with accessibility for people with mobility issues, vision, hearing impairments. Um, so... <laughs> I thought, how can we also get the access to the information um, and community? And Jody says this, so she said it to me, like, you need community. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Um, I didn't know at the time, right? Um, so I was born in Hamilton. I grew up in Dundas. I didn't know my dad either. Um, so uh, I really didn't know my heritage at all. When people would ask me, what are you? What's your background? Um, I didn't know, but in 2017, my mom did a DNA kit. The 23andMe with uh, the hospital offered it for free. It's part of a program. And my sister called me and said, guess what? Mom's indigenous. And I said, well, does that mean I'm indigenous too? And she said, of course, silly. Then of course I had to do the DNA kit and um, I found my dad in about six months. My mom's side took a bit longer. I was obsessed with ancestry uh, for about two years. And the, the new year of 2019, we got a breakthrough um, that they call breakthrough in the DNA. And um, a family friend up north that knew my great, great grandmother and who her children were, but they were all dead. And they said, but there is one, the youngest, my great aunt who lives right in Brantford. I was like, well, uh, Mississauga First Nation is 
between Sudbury and Sault Ste. Marie, like halfway, okay, like 800 kilometers away. Um, I know I, I didn't talk a lot about Mississauga because I don't know it yet. Um, I'm still learning as we all are. I'm just starting to reach out to community and meeting people. Um, then COVID hit. So I thought, well, what can I do here? Because I'm not there. I got one great aunt in Brantford. Um, my mom found two sisters living. They're in Sault Ste. Marie and North. Um, I just, oh, oh, my one cousin, she said, you have to talk to the old people. And I thought that was really important. Sorry. And I didn't know, like, elders. I didn't know that. I just, she, she said, well, the old people are the only ones who remember. And that would know who these families were. My great-grandmother and her children. So, well, what does that even mean? Then I heard from the staff at the library, well, there's grandmother's voice and you should talk to them. And I said, well, who's that? How do I do that? And then that's the email that Jody referred to, um, which I kind of poured my heart out in that email maybe. Um, I'm very proud of my great grandmother. And when I think like about resilience, I see her. And I don't want to talk too much about resilience, but we've had that. My mom didn't know her parents. I mean, my grandparents were great. They were. And we're so lucky, you know, to be here. Um, but there's a lot that happened here that I hope like we can bridge the gap and tell the truth to a lot of people um, who don't know even what the 60s scoop is, um, never mind. So um, I guess Jody might have said, let's meet at Iroquois Ridge. I live near there. I said, well, I'm doing a project there too. So, okay, so we can be outside, mass, you know, distance. And we walked around. I think it was still cold then because I remember being <laughs> like, Let's hurry up, like the gardens, you know, they, they didn't look good at the time, let's just say. Um, so the wheels got turning in my head and I wanted to find the information. Um, I was always big on research. So like the last two years on Ancestry and I thought, well, I don't even know what Iroquois Ridge means. Like, how naive am I? And here I am working for the town. I should find this out. Um, I asked Jody, and she said, wouldn't that be great if we could give that message and do something land-based? I said, well, my project is land-based, but it's all concrete. And it's construction and look, looks, you know, looks nice, but there was no... Um, I guess community, I don't know, something nice for people to look at, the women doing Tai Chi, you know, in the parking lot. And so there was these two little garden beds, I guess. And I thought, well, they're right at the main entrance. They're right there. Anybody coming from the park this way or that way, they're gonna see that. And I don't want to like put my name on this project if I, I don't do the gardens. It's not just concrete for me. Um, I want to beautify the landscape. People like this and say, wow, this looks like they really thought about this. And you know what? It didn't cost a lot of money at all. Um, we had Halton Region donate the uh, compost 
there's mulch coming in. Um, so Halton Environmental wanted to help. I said, well, what about the canoe garden project at Town Hall? Didn't Halton Environmental do that? Jody says, oh yeah, I know her, call her. I said, okay, I'll call her. You know, it's free advice, so it's not gonna cost nothing. I'll just call, she's like, oh yeah, plant this, plant that. I said, well, I like, what is this? I don't know nothing about gardening. <laughs> That's not my thing at all. So um, then Jody, like, what do I do? And, oh, well, there's, you met him. You met him at the libraries. What are the artists that you met last December? Joel, oh yeah, no, yes, okay. And then I said, well, I need a drawing because I'm a project manager. I need like a layout or something. And three days later, here's the garden. Here's the plants. You've got your everything Halton Environmental wanted. Um, we'll talk about that. I guess I should stay on track. It was really exciting. I threw it in the check with my boss. Okay, this is going in. I check with oh, even Tanya. Like Tanya, this is okay, right? Yep. Let's let's tie it into truth and reconciliation. Let's tie it into with a language component. I said, well, I'm just learning Anishinaabe. I don't know what the plant names are. Jody says, ask Minicon. I had the answers in about a week. So the sign will also have all the um, Ojibwe plan names on them. Um, I don't wanna talk too much about my mom's story, but there is a lot of resilience there. And people, even as far as the town of Wawa, were kind enough to send me a picture of my grandmother's grave over the email during COVID. So. We were happy to go there in the summer of 2019. Um, I didn't get as far as Wawa. My sister did, but um, even my some of the records of my grandfather were were missing. My great grandmother's uh, sorry husband, but we spent some time on the lake named after them. So that was really cool. I'm starting to see. Um, that there's a lot of history there that maybe people want to sweep under the rug, but they, some of it needs to be talked about. And what happened to my mom was real. She was five and she was taken from her mother. And some, we saw some of the papers, of course it's all blacked out because they don't give you the information. And they quoted my grandmother saying, oh no, not her. Oh, but um, she doesn't look native. She has blue eyes. So she'll be adopted quickly. And pff, we just got that two years ago. It also said my grandmother has many other children. Well, who are they? We can't even get that information. I may have my other aunties out there like, that were also adopted. I'm lucky to have met one. The other ones at the time, they were born after. There was a couple that we know are out there. So that's another thing that I'm advocating for. Andrea, do you mind if I ask you a question? Because yes. obviously I know Jody and Sherry, um, they, they, you know, certainly invited you to come in to share um, um, notice of the garden at the entryway of Iroquois Ridge, but also we're learning part of your story. And I, I wonder if, if anyone else is listening or if someone is listening that is maybe curious about their genealogy or their history, what were sort of the first steps in identifying or trying to kind of, you know, learn about uh, yourself? Like, how did, you, how did you kind of decide that this was gonna be something that you were gonna do? Well, um, it, at first it was helping my mom. 
my mom didn't know anything. So she was number one. Um, I helped her um, get her registration, which is now benefiting her. Um, and she has benefits for the first time ever um, with that. And then for me and my sister as well, just not having any culture to, well, you should have this culture. So I'm not coming into it looking at like um, that the, my Indigenous side was repressed because I believe in a lot of the older adults, it was. I'm looking at it with fresh eyes and hopefully change that. But I know my mom and um, the other 60 Scoop survivors, they, they're very shy, they're very timid. They're not gonna be coming forward like I am as a child of, and I think anybody in that age group that also had to deal with residential school like it's hard for them to talk so hopefully I can you know somehow do something and yeah. if it's just a sign in a garden that says the one dish was the way that indigenous peoples here have been doing for a millennia they one dish is diversity they were the first to share not just with themselves, because they were trading for long before um, they were trading with Europeans. They were trading with themselves. They knew how to govern themselves and take care of the land. So that's why the, the sign says, um, one dish welcomes diversity. And that's the story that Uncle Mike told was the story that's, they will eat from one dish and there will be enough for others and um, for future generations. So you can read the, the sign again. Um, I can't quote Mike's story, but you can hear his voice coming out in it, I think. Um, can you put it back up? for? Yes, yes thank you so much. So pretty much um, you've seen our land acknowledgement before. So we had to have that as number one. Then we talk about um, the one dish being an original story from the original people here. And look at how that applies today. The foundational principle that everyone gets to eat, everyone gets to be healed and be happy so future generations can thrive. And our garden tells that story with the pollinators and the butterflies. Um, I really like how it ties together the story about um, the Michisagi people. They were using the waterways. So the canoe garden, and this is also part of the David Suzuki program, but that was representing that traveling as um, monarch butterflies do. So they need these habitats to rebuild the diversity. And I thought it was so symbolic to rebuild diversity. Is that what we're doing? That's how I feel. That's what we're doing. We're rebuilding that in our truth and reconciliation um, calls to action. So this represents um, the call to get the information from indigenous people. And I, um, is it number 14? There's so many, there's so much to do but I believe it hits one of them. And I, I think it's number 14, that indigenous people are the ones to teach the culture and society. And the language is, it's urgent to preserve that language. So I think the sign will tell you and you'll hear more of especially introductions 
with the language. And if we can learn that, I mean, I'm, I'm older, but if I can teach someone or someone reading the sign saying, oh, what can I do in my neighborhood to learn and care for the plants and the trees um, and maybe not litter, whatever it is, because this land needs to have that attention. And I think um, the sign speaks to that. And also um, Minicon did such an amazing job putting that together. And I think they're also doing the planting at Country Heritage Farm. With that, I'm gonna to say to you, Migwitch, from the bottom of my heart to Jody and Sherry, and also my friends of the town of Oakville for letting me talk today. Um, it was my first time telling my story. So I hope you enjoyed it. And it's a first step. It's the first thing I've ever done um, for Indigenous people. And as part of my healing journey, I can say it's definitely like you guys have embraced me. I feel like I'm part of this family too, which I've never, I don't have any family. So um, I need to learn a lot. I know that. And I'm as I'm reading books and online as much as I can, it's not the same as meeting people and having that community. So um, yeah, and it, I need to learn from the elders and I think grandmother's voice, like it's the only thing here that where you can go and listen. And I, I, I watch your YouTubes and your Facebook lives and I'm so mesmerized. And that day at the farm when I met Uncle Mike, I just sat there like a kid at the front of the class. Like he was so mesmerizing. So I, I, I'm glad everybody enjoyed him last week. And um, thank you again for letting me tell my story. Thank you. Thank yeah, you Andrea, so much. You know, it really it uh, takes a, a brave soul to do this um, virtually. And, uh, and thank you so much, Chimigwich, because it is very, very hard sometimes, especially when it's personal and, uh, and, and you're just talking to uh, people on a, on a screen. So uh, thank you so much, too. It, um, I, I, really, I really do uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you being here. And also appreciate appreciate you being with us in community because we are creating a sense of community, like I said earlier, on this virtual platform. And uh, you know, and it and it is like there's so many things that have have gone missing from us as well. Uh, the ones that have gone through 60 Scoop and residential school and things like that. And and um, just very very quickly, I just want to just say one thing before um, we wrap it up. Um, my all my family has already received the 60 scoop settlement except for me and uh and my brother had emailed me yesterday and said like i i finally received my settlement and and i was really happy for him but on the same line i'm thinking like i'm actually saddened as well you know that it had to be something like this to come forward that all so many kids were separated from their families and scooped up for no reason at all and then to have the government give a settlement a settlement package, um, but also missing certain people too, right? Like I, I still haven't heard anything about my story, about my situation, but that's another another story. But you know, again, thank you so much because it is it's you're you're telling personal stories to strangers, and uh, but we're not strangers any longer because we spent four weeks with you um, just to try and share some of the things that we know. And like I said at the very beginning, we know about this much. And we're only trying to share what we know. And Jody alluded to reports and commissions that have gone forward in this country. And one of the very first commissions, like of course there was inquiries, justice inquiries as to why there's indigenous folk um, overrepresented in the jail system. And there was inquiries in the Manitoba justice inquiry, as well as here in Ontario with the Ipperwash inquiry. But before then there was this inquiry, a commission called the Royal Commission on Aboriginal People. And it was back in about 1996. And out of there, it was a 4,000 4, page report. And there was 440 recommendations from that one report. Then now we go into um, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and there's 94 calls for justice 
So now it's 440 plus 94, okay? And then we go into the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls inquiry, 231 calls for action, right? So that's over 700 recommendations, calls for action for all of us to learn a little bit more, get behind this um, and really understand where your, where your commitment is. Um, there's no shortage of information. You, if you want some reading material over the summertime, that's a six, it's a six volume um, book, 4,000 pages, uh, and that'll keep you busy for a while. But also with our Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the six volumes is probably the most con con condensed and concise history that we have in this country. You can get it all online, it's all online. You can order the, um, you can get it through there, or you can probably go to Good Minds and they may have the six volumes that you can order it. I know for sure that the library, uh, Oakville Public Library has those volumes as well because we've asked the librarian every single time that we find something, we tell him, order it for your community. So I believe Daniel has uh, shared some resources last week. We shared resources last week, right, Daniel? Yes, our, our week free reminder included, I believe, four different reading lists that, right. um, that the library provides. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, what we're trying to say is that there's no shortage of um, recommendations, calls for justice, because Indigenous people know what's wrong. We know how to solve the problems. We know how to, we know, we know what we need, but it is the federal government who who drags its heels, right? And we learned a little bit, a tiny little bit from, from Uncle Mike and uh, about some of those uh, policies and how they're always trying to prevent Indigenous people from even participating. Um, so I know we only have like maybe six minutes to wrap things up. Sure, there, was um, a, so I, there was a question in the chat that maybe uh, if, you, if, if, if uh, either Jody, uh, Andrea or yourself could take a shot at answering, just the name of the garden was the One Dish Garden and we often hear the uh, one dish and one spoon. What, what, is the, what is the significance of that? Can answer that. <laughs> there were wampum agreements. So this happens to be the one dish with one spoon wampum agreement, which is like an exchange of traditional belts between various tribes that were here. And Jody rhymed off about 10 of them this morning. There's also six nations in Mississauga First Nation. You may hear Mississauga Nation. So all these tribes, um, and that was their way of trading and making agreements and self-governance before the British came. So now even, you know, us being here, we have a responsibility now. We're also in that one dish agreement because we live here and nobody else is going to take care of the land here. We have to do it. So um, that's... Uh, hopefully a teaching moment. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. I um, think, oh, sorry, did you need no, to- No, I'm just, sorry, there's, uh, I'm seeing more questions come in. And so uh, is there a map online that shows various First Nations? So uh, yeah, it, the, the link it. I yeah, the link I provided earlier from our kids network, uh, they, or yep, Kirsten's also provided native yeah, there's one. Um, yeah. yeah. Just, just Google will do its work, type in what you wanna know. There is so much information out there, right? Or whatever platform you use there. I have the um, app now. Yeah, you, to, you told me about that app. I love and you it. you can travel and actually see which Where you are. you're on. I have to say, um, if, I just have a, a story or two. Today was really wonderful at Country Heritage Park. They have a, a built, one of the buildings is full of artifacts, like full, like you all, what we, uh, it's, it's so full, I'm excited even just saying how full it is of, of thousands of things there. And I like, I, it's amazing what's in there. And we were there with a youth today and he walked in and he saw this like uh, map of Canada. And it, I, I can't even guess the year because I didn't really stay there, to, but I'm gonna say early 1900s. It was, or I don't know if they made it there. Okay, maybe, whatever. It looks really old. I don't know when they started to make maps, but anyway. Um, today, and, and just in the last week or so, we have been so blessed with people showing up with information like Andrea, you know, you know, being in that space is just wonderful when people show up. 
but how ex we are in a really exciting time. And all of this information that we talked about, the self-determinants, you know, there's just like so much information out there that, that we could share with you. But I started my journey by really, even back when, when I, I don't even know if it was Google, it was like micro something like where I was trying, you know, I don't even know, remember the, the, how I accessed it online, but I would spend hours trying to find the information. So if I found it 20 years ago, just whatever you're thinking of, Google it and put it in there and you'll, it'll come up. But there was something I shared with Daniel earlier, some links, some um, of the policies that we we're trying to get to, but you know, I, we have to really, I know everybody was thanking you, Andrea, about your story. And it really is when we stop to listen to people and hear them and connect with them, this is the time that we're really in. So, you know, Thank you for everyone for being so gracious and learning. And if you were uncomfortable at all thinking, okay, get on with it. You know, I don't mean to say that because it's just sometimes we think that like that's how people are like, okay, what's the point of this? This, this is one of those uncomfortable things, right? That happen where well, you said you were going to talk about this. What's up with it? Like I saw the sign going up and down. And so, you know, I think that this is, this is what we talk about, about being in that uncomfortable position and that uncomfortable feeling is that, you know, but let's talk about what we came here to talk about. But what grandmother Renee always reminds us is that we, we are here for this and for each other in these spaces. And I just have to share, you said my name a lot today, Andrea, and that's uncomfortable for me sometimes. Even though I always say it to my kids, can you call me like Cindy and not mom or something today? I don't want you to call me, but um, I'm really, really so grateful to all of you for creating this space for us. Grandmother's voice came because of wanting to know my connection to my family. And, and as a, my father was a 60 scoop survivor and, you know, and he didn't really survive because he, he actually committed suicide later, like in his fifties. And recently we had an article that was released for grandmother's voice. Just, you know, it's just happening right now. And in there, it brought back something for me because I can't even remember when I tell my story now, what I share uh, because it comes so, so clearly. Um, but my father's, the government has my father's file and I won't know who my father's father was, but I, so, so there's a lot of understanding that we need to have and a lot of grace for people who are going to tell their story. And so we did want to talk a lot about, like, we wanted to talk more about um, the policies and some frameworks that were, that were designed um, to support Indigenous people today. And so this, this, uh, it, Daniel, I shared this link with you. It's, it's from a library, some, some library file, and yep. I found it really meaningful. So I just wanted to read this um, and just kind of leave this with you all. And hopefully it intrigues you um, because this is what kind of caught me. It's a historical overview. And it said, it is impossible to understand the current situation in Canada or indigenous people's objectives without an understanding of the history of non-indigenous settlement and consequence interactions. It is a history long obscured and misrepresented now in the process of retrieval and revision, thanks in part to the work of several commissions of inquiry. And so like, I just got goosebumps reading that because in that little bit, it tells, it tells us that these, co these commissions and calls to action, calls to justice, or calls for justice that are in the TRC, missing and murdered indigenous women and girls, which is why we built that, that uh, monument. You know, for years we were doing sisters and spirit vigils. We were doing ceremonies. We were doing things around town, hanging red dresses, but people were not, it wasn't engaging. And when we asked the elders and the, and the indigenous people, we said, what should we do? They said, let's make it living. Let's make something living so that people, we honor them. It's not about, it's not about being in pain and, and living in that place, right? Wendy, before you go, thank you so much. Wendy Roberts is, is leaving. She worked on that garden today. Like she helped build that. She is, she is a rock star. I'm unbelievable. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to, to share that a little bit with everybody and know that we, I threw all kinds of links to Daniel today about like, it, I just kind of had a feeling like if we can't, if we can't get to it, we want to guide you to get to where you need to go to, to really just like read it, understand why we're doing this and don't hesitate to come 
Like mm-hmm. we've, we're doing this because this is for us. And the grandmothers say, grandmother's voice is about sharing information for all of us to come together and really mm-hmm. benefit from indigenous ways of being, mm-hmm. right? And if, if we were, if they, we paid attention, you know, or if they paid attention, you know, um, that like hundreds of years ago, we wouldn't be reinventing or re-talking about diversity and inclusion everywhere. We mm-hmm. would just know it and be it right now. So, mm-hmm. Nyawa, Nyawa Goa for, for being here. I just, it yeah. feels so comfortable. I feel like we can keep this going, going forever. Yeah. Maybe not yeah. every week, but yes, thank the you land. Much, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much too for, for being here, everyone. And thank you, Andrea and Jody and, and our hosts, Nabil, Tanya and Daniel. And of course, to all uh, 71 of you that are out there with us this evening. So, Chi uh, Miigwech. Uh, we'll look forward to next week and uh, and we'll send you some more links uh, for next week's uh, for next week's session just so that you have a little bit more um, learning like Jody said we're, we're always trying to provide you with some links and to keep your keep the learning happening and uh, so again have a wonderful night and Chimigwech. thank you watch for our, our David Suzuki launch okay because we're gonna yeah. need you all to vote for us <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, just seeing a question in the chat. Is this recorded? Yep, it's being recorded. Um, so we will make them available and we, it'll be shared um, for your next in your next week's reminder. Amazing. This is Sherry, so cool. I need to, to talk to you. Okay, Tamara, can you email me? Um, email. Daniel, can you, can you provide her my email on the in the chat? 